one side here, we've got a twisted top box, which is no drama. Um, just an unbolt, pull it out, straighten it. Have to do it to both of them, we'll brace them. It'll all go back in. I think the real proof of this is uh, even after we'd realised that it was cockeyed like this, and that's like 300 odd kilometres away, plus mm. 60 k's of that was rough dirt yeah, road, yeah, and definitely. then we got onto rough Victorian roads, <laughs> so it's almost of the same thing. Um, and so the airbag's been cocked up, working on an angle. We kept 10 psi in it just to so it wouldn't sort of pinch on itself, mm. but there's no damage to the airbag. No, not at all. So testament to it, really. It's testament. Mm. It's, it's a bit like saying, wow, how good are these mm. things, you know? Um, you do it totally wrong and, and knock it, mm. and it still works. Mm. And plus, of course, you know, this trip round, I'm carrying all Karen's gear, you know, the sink and the mobile 240 volt hair dryer. Hair dryer and mm. don't forget the sunbed and the. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to kill me! No, we're not. But we are loaded up because we're on our way to the show. So, um, okay, we better hook in and sort it out. Yeah, yeah, let's trip it out. All right. Trip it out, let's go. Hey, Rich. Yeah? This, this side started to do it too. Yeah, I see that, same way as well. Yeah, yeah. But it hasn't, of course, because it only had to support my weight. Didn't have to support the handbrake's weight. <laughs> I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. All right, so we just released the air from the bags. As you see, we, um, what's happened is, as it started to go over, no U-bolt that, for the, the bottom tower is ever going to hold it on the axle. So as soon as that weight started to go over, it's just forced the U-bolts round and over, and then it's, it's, it's like catastrophic from then on. Um, but this, I'm so pleased with this bag. It's been on such an acute angle, and she's still going. So get this off, get it over on the bench. You have to knock it, bend it straight, bit of welding, happy days. Because the bracket's over on its side, um, we're going to have real trouble getting the nut off of this uh, this bolt here. Now, I don't know what we're going to do really, other than taking the whole tub off. I think we're going to have to release the airbag from underneath it and try and manipulate it somehow. Uh, maybe bend it back in situ. We'll see. It's going to be a struggle. That has, that has gone as far as we can go, dude. So you can't get that nut off at all, can you? Well, no, we will do, because once we release it and it, that can hang down a bit, we should be able to get it out. Otherwise, we'll be... Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. We don't want to have to chop this bolt. We really don't. No. But it's going to be a long process, because we're using the open-ended spanner a quarter turn of time, so... Well, we've only... We've been at the other bolt for about half hour now. Quarter of a turn. Oh, I love it when you can't get a proper speed tool in there. And, um, yeah, we're nearly there, so... Got the other side out, this side's gonna come out as well, no problems. And we'll be cooking on gas then. Gonna try and, it's quite thick this metal, but gonna put it in the vise, see if we can uh, bend it straight, just the one side first. Well, I might try the inner bit first actually, because it's gonna be a bit easier with it bent out like that, so let's crack on and get it right out. We're gonna put this vise through its paces. All right, so this is gonna be a piece by piece adjustment, I think. Uh, trial and error, trying different things at a time, I think. trying to keep the, this surface fl as flat as possible because that's where the airbag connects to. So, a bit more hammering, I reckon we'll be there. Getting there, it's never going to be perfect, but he'll get us home. Still a bit out, but it's not bad. Pretty good. Hey, we'll brace that up and we'll get back to Queensland, I reckon. This is the other side. Um, it's not as bad, obviously, because the other one has folded over on itself, but um, it was still starting to go. 
and if we had left it any longer without bracing it, it would have done exactly the same as the other side. So I think it's best to do both sides, uh, brace them up, get them back on, and address it when we get back home. Just got to bend it a bit straight. Don't go too mad on it, and uh, we'll be good to go. All right, so looking around the workshop here at Terrain Tamer, um, they haven't got much in the way of old cutoffs and stuff, so uh, one of the guys down here has given me an old flash lube bracket, which is three mil thick still, and it will be ideal for the job at hand. So we're gonna cut four equal strips out with the angle grinder, get them welded in place, put it back together. And I'll tell you what, I don't know where John's gone. About 40 minutes ago, he said he was going to get a quick coffee and, well, I suppose there's no surprise in that, is there? So I'll do a bit of work at Terrain Tamer at their headquarters. Look, I've got proper eye protection and a guard on the grinder. What's that all about? I'm spoiled. And this is the one, this is the damaged one. It's come up all right. I mean, it's not yeah. 100%, but. It's funny, isn't it? When you look at the thickness mm -hmm. and everything, you think, how on earth can that? It just goes to show how much twisting, puncturing effort on that airbag mm. that it managed to nail one of these, and the airbag's still fine. Yeah. It's really it was hard to get back to shape. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if I did it, it would be real easy. Oh, hello. Sorry, didn't know you could hear that. Just get to it, I'll, I'll have to get another coffee. <laughs> All right, this one's still way too hot to touch, but you can see what we've done, cross-braced it. Um, three mil still. It's not going anywhere, and if it does, I'll be very surprised. But I've been known to be wrong. Gee, that shitty welding, mate. Oh, okay. that. it's a what gassless welder. Oh. It's not like the Rolls Royce we got at your place. Oh, mate, I could have spat yeah. on something better. You won't see. Keep painting, Flash. Yeah, I'm trying to cover it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what happens when you travel with your mates, right? You get to a workshop, and all you want to do is fix something. <laughs> but you can't, because the mates take over. Oh yeah, so, that what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as soon as the boys have taken over, you know Flash, you know Richard, well, um, there's nothing left for me to do. Coffee, Rich? Co yeah, that'd be, that'd be lovely, mate. <laughs> Cheers, bud, I'll have the milk and two. So the, the trick here, we actually had a loose U-box. We both agree that um, probably it wasn't loose, it's just running on a different profile that hasn't come loose. Um, and so the trick is, just like when these were installed, do everything up loose and get it in just the right position before you go through and tighten everything up. Come on, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Flash just made an interesting point. It's all in the paint job. Because it does look really interesting. Kind of looks a little bit like the Sydney Harbour Bridge under there now. <laughs> but I reckon braced up, mate, that's going to hold. Mm -hmm. Right, so we're all back together, ready to go. Just uh, whiz, the, whiz the nuts up with a gun. Just going to finish them off with the breaker bar. Matt, if you could just let the... Uh, let it down so we've got some weight on it. And then um, and then we're done. We're away. Obviously you should be using the torque wrench but... Clean.